even a vanilla bean and it's really thick and juicy, like a bourbon vanilla bean, it doesn't mean it's better. You know, the adhesions are very thin and strong, so. That's okay, let me just explain something here. I've already added my chocolate. I just, did you guys notice that I had the chocolate in a bowl? I poured my hot starchy milk with the cocoa powder into the chocolate because I don't want to burn the chocolate off the burner. I want to just, all I want to do is melt the chocolate. The percentage of chocolate to the base is not that high, so it'll melt easily in the hot milk. And then I'm going to put this on an ice bath really quick because we're going to make an ice cream and uh, I want this to be chilled. And so we're doing the expedited version of this. So I brought, once I've added my chocolate and salt, <clears throat> brought it back to boil, whisking constantly, and you want to boil it for a minute. Whenever you have something viscous like cocoa powder and chocolate in a recipe, you never want to walk away from it. It will burn. It's dense. It's heavy. You know, and as soon as you walk away from it, it will it will burn in the bottom of your pan. So you bring it to a boil, and the reason why I'm boiling it for a full minute is to completely hydrate that corn that uh, cornstarch, which means to activate it. I really want to make sure that all those molecules of cornstarch are completely swelled, and they form a network, and they get and they just kind of scoop up all that moisture, and they get thick. So once I boil it for a minute, I go into a chinois. Everybody have a chinois at home? <laughs> <laughs> What a colander, though. That doesn't work. What's a colander? Well, use it for pasta. You don't know. Johnny uh, <laughs> Eugene. No, I have no idea what pasta is. <laughs> so, you pass it through because, of course, all the time you're going to get little, you know, because of the dry ingredients in the liquid, there's going to be little pieces that stick. And even, a, you know, you, this is kind of funny. Even in even modern day, like, here's the pot, the shape of the pot, right? Here's the shape of your whisk. How the hell are you supposed to get into the corners? I don't care what anybody <laughs> says or like all these geniuses. You could never ever. There's always going to be a spot that you're trying to find. Like, huh? What's the brand of Johnny Arrows you need uh, whisk? I'm not, I'm not that smart. I'm just a cook. Just a cook. You should do it. You I should do it. So I'm just straining it through. There's always going to be there's always going to be a little bit that kind of sticks to the pot or sticks to the whisk. So I like these really smooth. If I want it smooth, it should be smooth. If I want it crunchy, it should be crunchy. I want to be able to control my texture. Right, chef? We. We chef. We chef. So, essentially, my pudding's done. At this point, depending on what I'm doing with it, if I'm serving it family style, we go into a bowl, like a casserole, a butter bowl, or some kind of beautiful decorative bowl. But for what we're doing, I'm going to cool it down a little bit, and we put the, a layer of the passion gelée down. You're going to make that with anybody, right? Yeah, we're going to make it with anybody. So that's the pudding at this point. You can also just cool it, and once it's cool, just pipe it here, your pudding. You know, rather than, than take a chance of working with something hot, but I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty liquid. But what is important, and I don't... Do I have some plastic crap, please, Chef? Thank you. Is, um... Uh, some people like the skin. I got an issue with the skin. On the pudding? Yeah. I don't, I don't like that. No, I don't like that I don't like that. I don't like skin on my pudding. It's something that freaks me out about that skin. <laughs> you know? like, Joel George loves it because he grew up with, he grew up uh, essentially at a dairy farm. And they would take the fresh milk and came on pasteurized, bring it to a boil, let it sit, and then harvest all that skin off the, the fresh cream. And then use that as a jam on their toast in the morning. That was their breakfast every day. It was just fresh milk like jam. That. that sounds much <laughs> much nicer than pudding pudding skin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like John Dory's I like the skin. Like it's not really the same thing, John Dory. Like I don't know. Anyway, so I would do this if I was pudding directly on the surface before it cools. And you prevent skin. Anytime you make a custard like a pastry cream, same same concept. Like, but like that, directly on the surface. Cool. I'm done. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, ready for this guy? So I, uh, I chilled down my base there. And I want this to be on the slowest possible. I put the paddle attachment in the KitchenAid just like it would be nitrogen in the ice cream at home. At home? So <laughs> you think you're going to be in the chinois, right? No, no, no. You guys don't have this, but you have that. <laughs> Molecular and all that misnomer stuff. This is um, 
different nitrogen used to be a lot more available at apothecaries, and so Victorian people would go and have the ladies would have an ice cream party and go pick up a little jug of liquid nitrogen. Did you know this? What are you talking it's about? Old <laughs> I'm not too to drink today. No, that's totally true. Um, people used to make liquid nitrogen. I mean, it, think about it. it. Everybody was into all that kind of alchemy and much more chemistry and sodas and all that kind of stuff, and so this sort of mystical, fun side of using an element to freeze um, has just become fashionable again. So that's all we're doing. It's just fashion. So have you guys ever tried to make ice cream at home? Anybody have a home ice cream machine? Do you know what's wrong with your ice cream machine? Do you know why it never gives you great quality ice cream? Because it takes too long to freeze. What happens is your ice cream base is essentially an emulsion. Right? You have fats being your milk and creams, you have waters in your eggs. The eggs are the binder, but even so, the amount of time that it takes to freeze, what's happening is the water is coming out of solution. So when she's talking about stabilizers, stabilizers, for, stabilizers prevent water from, from water crystals from forming, coming out of the emulsion and crystallizing and forming big, bigger water crystals. So the best possible way, the best ice cream you'll ever make or ever try is actually liquid ice cream, liquid nitrogen ice cream, because it freezes the emulsion so fast, the water crystals can't come out of solution. You know that. That's awesome. Thank you for that. You know, we had that, when I was a kid, we had that old school, like, prank with the salt. Uh, that sucked. That was, like, the youngest brother. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like, I personally like all different kinds of ice creams, and I like all different kinds of ice cream machines. And um, my favorite one that I don't have yet, I think we have the soccer ball that... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and you put the base in, and then you have a party, and then you have ice cream. I mean, I really need to get that. I'm I've got to get that. My reminder, we've got to get that in the staff. Did you, did, you have a, did you have a Snoopy, uh, Snoopy snow cone machine? I didn't have a Snoopy one. I had a little Snoopy machine. You see, that's child abuse. <laughs> Every kid should have a Snoopy snow cone machine. We, had, we, we did have a easy bake oven. And my mom said, you know, once I ran out of mixing, she's like, oh, you have to make your own. There you go. So, there you go. We're gonna we're gonna let Elizabeth wrap up with her crazy liquid nitrogen up here, but.